Thank you so much, Nalkon. It's great to be back, right? Uh, thanks, fellow panelists. Today's topic is disruptive technologies and its impact on CISO's careers. Uh, pro provocative, is the CISO dead? If he doesn't catch on to the technologies, we have the world's best speakers out here. Let's challenge them. Let's have a good se session. Audience, do your best. We'll try and answer those questions. Jackson, opening comments to you, the opening batsman. What type of technologies are disruptive? So cloud is no longer disruptive, it's here. What is the disruptive technology? What should CISOs do? Your opening comments uh, on this great topic. Um, hello, hi. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you, Burgess. And uh, actually, thank you to Nalcon and Antrix. Uh, we are back after two years. So it's wonderful to see faces back again at Nalcon. Um, from my side, you know, some of the technologies that are, for me, are disruptive even ahead is the application, let's say, for example, for blockchain. We still are talking about blockchain and it's become synonymous with cryptocurrency, but I think the applications go beyond that and I think we have a lot to secure on that. And I'm not talking only from a perspective of an airport or of a, a private enterprise. I think the applications of blockchain will go out into voting tomorrow, for example. I mean, we know that pharma is built for blockchain, but voting, if you're doing, if you're buying property, so it impacts all, each and every one of us. These are applications of blockchain which is yet to materialize. So I think these are, and plus robotics, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles, unmanned ground vehicles. Now this is more from an uh, airport application. So I think these are a few of the disruptive areas that are coming up, I think, which we need to tackle. Thanks, Zaxine. Ankur, over to you. From a, t from a conglomerate to an airport to you to phone pay. Okay. Uh, Jackson mentioned about uh, blockchain applications and unmanned aerial vehicles. From your perspective, what type of technologies are in the future which the generation out here should be aware of, you should be aware of, and you should be mastering? Sure, I think, uh, check, yeah. Okay, so according to me, I think I've been part of the startups in India. I'll, I'll try and focus more of Indian, uh, Indian culture. So I think in India, disruption started with when Geo started the price war, right? We had, we, we came up with internet with everyone, and that's where our disruption started in terms of Indian IT tech. So when I mentioned that right, internet, uh, everything around internet started changing for India, right? It might be e-commerce uh, picked up, then we came up with UPI, right? And then we came up with uh, ONDC, probably the latest ones coming up. So I think specifically talking about India, these are the future disruptions which people should know specifically in India, yeah. Okay, so but which particular technology are you talking of? Do you talking of telecom or 5G or which one do you think is more disruptive in nature? So I think in terms of technology, I think, uh, uh, again, uh, 5G will, will disrupt a lot for sure. Uh, when it comes to speed, we using 5G, we'll have more devices connected, uh, we'll have more bandwidth, and it'll affect nearly every domain. It might be internet, e-commerce, or healthcare. So I think it'll disrupt. According to me, 5G and, and others will be the Thank most you. disruptive. Sandeep, over to you. Uh, from uh, airports to what he mentioned, to a tech company in the world, where are you preparing uh, to be disruptive in nature? And how are you securing that journey? Yeah, so we are an engineering services company. So what we see as uh, destructive technologies are your autonomous uh, vehicles, okay, digital twins. We are also talking about uh, digital twin for the earth, right? So that is uh, coming up. And uh, then we have uh, this bio hack for hacking. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Biohacking. Biohacking. That's a topic about. for next time in Alcon session, training session. <laughs> yeah, so biohacking is there. So these are uh, sub areas, right? And uh, yeah, your uh, EVs, okay, so big time. But okay, EVs autonomous is more vehicles. Okay. So I'll say uh, autonomous vehicles which are coming up, right? So these are some areas uh, in the engineering side where we see okay, there's a lot of uh, disruptions. Come on. Save the best for the last. These guys are covered from autonomous vehicles to 5G to unmanned aerial to blockchain to biohacking to digital twin for the earth, whatever that means. Uh, sure. What's your choice? And then the right. audience gets. Sure. So uh, I think if I talk about the disruptive technologies, 
to me uh, I, I would say i think uh, jackson already covered i think blockchain is definitely a you know disruptive technology and it's going to pick up a lot uh, there was another session also going on in the morning we heard the complexities of that you know same like you know uh, multi chain cross chain uh, so i think that's uh, blockchain is definitely the one and if i talk about from my own experience uh, in our organization i think we are going to make use of ar vr by you know going to implement the metaverse so for our organization uh, we plan to use it for collaboration for our client visits so that's one another area that we have and then i think we have already kind of come to an age where we are moving towards a web 3.0 which is you know supposed to be full of distributed computing uh, i would say which is so is quantum, is by, is quantum again disruptive and further off do you consider that uh yeah but uh, to be honest not much exposure to that that how soon it's going to come and That's how the topic be okay great <laughs> but yeah I, i think that these are the areas which are thing you know are, are quite disruptive and going to change the way we are going to do the business thanks so question for the audience right we had the esteemed panelists talking about blockchain 5g uh digital twin for the earth autonomous vehicles uh, engineering services are these guys really covering it or is there something much more which you would like yes sir to to, to mics here please we need more more people with mics and ask the toughest questions yeah so the toughest i think will be uh, one behind mic please will be the quantum technologies implementation probably the qkd and the post quantum cryptography and as you are speaking about a digital twin uh possible solution or will be in a metaverse availability of people 24/7 today i'll go and go back and sleep in the night but if my if i am in a metaverse i have to be available 24/7 so you're talking of two disruptive technologies merging together blockchain metaverse which is any linked but with quantum cut uh, mic there G gentlemen yeah thank you Yeah, so I also had the similar point of uh, quantum technology because it is soon going to change the entire telecommunication infrastructure that we have. A lot of investment has also already gone in the foreign countries, like they have a tactical network laid out, and they are working on the satellite communication mostly in uh, China. And we at India are also struggling to implement it. So, what is your take on that? Is it more of a buzz, or it is something which which is a much required thing? Just yep. to answer. All right. <laughs> thanks at this stage i think we are exploring it i think uh, there are few startups who are doing that they work with the army if you write the word struggling is something we all are getting our hands on that i'm sure some countries have got it better but 5g itself is coming inside so the applications of next technology in india is still going to be a bit more behind on that sure uh, mike there please i think adok shaj adok shaj the question in hindi i like the way you normally ask yes okay so Uh, मेरा बहुत सिंपल सा सवाल है आप सभी को ग्राफिक कार्ड मालूम होगा बराबर ग्राफिक कार्ड पहले कॉमन नहीं थे सस्ते लैपटॉप में बिल्कुल नहीं आते थे आम आदमी रखता नहीं था आज की तारीख में 35000 के लैपटॉप में भी एक बेसिक सा ग्राफिक कार्ड है जो इतना एटलीस्ट इतना पावरफुल है कि उस पर हम कुछ जनरल पर्पज कंप्यूटिंग कर सकते हैं एनवीडिया का क्यूडा टूल किट एम का स्ट्रीम प्रोग्रामिंग का टूल किट इनको रिलीज हुए भी मेरे ख्याल से लगभग दस साल हो चुके हैं ये टेक्नोलॉजी इस टाइम पर मशीन लर्निंग के मॉडल ट्रेन करने में काफी यूज हो रही है इसके मेलिशियस और ऑफेंसिव साइड पे यूज किए जा सकते हैं लेकिन फॉर सम रीजन हम इस पर बात नहीं कर रहे हैं क्यों नहीं कर रहे हैं विशुल आस्क एग्जैक्टली मेरा सवाल वही है कि हम क्यों नहीं कर रहे हैं क्यों नहीं कर रहे ओके फॉर द सेम रीजन नो आई विल मेस अपाई एम स्पीकिंग बैक इन इंग्लिश आई नो हिंदी है this is for the same reason i don't worry about getting stabbed in the night every day when i'm driving back home because i've not experienced it so why an uh, a society doesn't talk about a problem is because we don't face it enough it's it's very simple if it becomes a problem we will all tackle it together having said that what are the problems that we are tackling today we have enough on our hands ransomware it's it's there how it gets in that's there so that is what we are tackling about yes the future does Uh, makes sense and here comes the aspect of application of that so for example when i say you know i i took the example of blockchain uh just to see a, a candid question to everybody here is the blockchain unhackable can it be hacked yes so the thing is that until yesterday 
the whole mantra was that it's unhackable. Everybody wish should move to that. The point is that we don't know what are the implications of it and the applications of it. That's why. Why are we not talking about one particular problem? Maybe enough people haven't uh, faced the problem. But it's a problem. I'm not disputing that. Okay. So I agree with Jackson in the morning. We are having breakfast. And he had a good point. His philosophy, and I like, I like if you can challenge that, is I will cater to a problem once it becomes a problem. Today, CISOs have business and 10 other problems. Does the audience have a perspective on that? That should a CISO look at a disturb tech once it becomes imminent enough, or should it be forthcoming? Yeah. Sir, one last question. Just a moment, please. Yeah, yeah, please. We uh, are blockchain. Par baat kar rahe jo... Louder, louder. The guy behind should hear you. Okay. So, we are blockchain par baat kar rahe hai, aur mere khayal se kai saal se is par baat kar rahe hai, kyunki market mein hype bana hua hai. Yeah, absolutely. Mera bahut simple sa sawaal hai. Aisi koon si problem hai, jo distributed immutable database aur Merkel tree se solve nahi ho sakti, lekin blockchain se solve ho sakti hai. Blockchain experts, you want to respond to him? I don't think we are on the panel qualified to respond. But you got the answer. The reason is that the two big pillars of blockchain are the two things that are the same. The cryptographic hashing part is basically the Merkel tree property. The record is that you can't have one transaction that can't be overwrite, that is the immutability. The things that you are centralized, that is the distributed system. और ये चीजें ब्लॉकचेन के कई डिकेट पहले से बैटल टेस्टेड फॉर्म में यूज हो रही हैं। हाँ। तो फिर हम ब्लॉकचेन पर क्यों जा रहे हैं? ब्लॉकचेन क्यों कर रहे हैं? Is that a question? Yes. I for for at least I I'm I don't have any statistics to back it, but for maybe 50 percent of the companies it's FOMO, fear of missing out. My neighbor is doing blockchain, I need to do blockchain. My neighbor is doing artificial intelligence, I will do it. That is why we are doing it. We don't have a robotic process automation. Everybody is doing it. Every department wants to do it. Why? That's, that's, that's a serious question. You, you asked the right question. If it, and for, the, I think for the last decade, cloudification, uh, take everything to the cloud. And now everybody is bringing some things back from the cloud. For the very same reason, we're doing FOMO. See, in manufacturing industry also, if you have seen, no, see, automations are existing, right? So, uh, be it a, uh, automated uh, vehicle routing or, or whatever it is. So, automations were available in manufacturing industry from uh, very long time, okay? But now we are talking about robotic process automations and all that because these technologies are catching up because they are supporting environments which are available. So, same with blockchain also. So, the, it has been bundled and now it is catching up more. Good. Thanks, Amdeep. Uh, you want to mention something, Anko? No, I think, uh, so like you said by Jaxi, I think it's more about FOMO, what people and industry think about it, and that's where investors will also go, that's where more money will be poured in, and that's where the whole, whole work will go into. So I think, rightly pointed out, we have problems, we have different solutions, but it's more about what industry perceives. So, Smith, is it important. FOMO? What is your view, Smith? It's, it's more like FOMO, if you ask me, because it's like competition. If the other guy is doing it, let me go and try to do it. I have one important question, by the way, which is, uh, which is basically for the CISOs. Okay. Now, one interesting thing that has happened is that Cobalt Strike source code has been leaked. And now there have been various players who are basically coming in and creating their own command and controls. And there is a new buzzword which is not letting us sleep. In fact, the CISOs as well, that is human operated ransomware targeting through Active Directory. Now, how are we going to deal with those situations and what should be our approach on tackling human operated ransomware and especially uh, being the non-commercialization of Cobalt Strike which used to cost like $75,000 to getting it open source uh, command and controls which are being plugged, uh, plugged and play kind of thing that is happening. I'll answer your question in a very light way and then I'll give it to my fellow SD sure. CISOs. I think the short answer is hire the best talent from Nalcon. <laughs> and let them do that, right? <laughs> but I'll leave it to you. Kumar, you want to mention that? Sorry, your question was... Or you can say hire EY. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who who that, hires the best that's, that's a smart option. Uh, sorry, <laughs> just to be it. clear with the question, your question was that if the source code got leaked and then, you know, it is being used. So, what, what exactly is the question? So, Cobalt Strike is basically a command and control entire that's hacker right. suit, you can say. Yeah, that's right. And the source code of Cobalt Strike is leaked. Now, there are uh, different command and controls that have been built in. It's but also could be an advantage, right? It's just not a negative thing. If there are cheaper versions coming out, if there are better versions coming out, Correct. maybe they can use more of that. So is that a is that a problem? At the same time, hackers are using it for weaponizing and constantly targeting it. Yeah. So that keeps happening. I mean, to say nothing new with that. We heard, you know, CISOs do that daily. Right? Someone will come yeah. up with some tool. 
in fact, the Mannion got hacked. A lot of, you know, their tools were, you know, allegedly supposed to be, or they Correct. were called out, you know, kind of hacked. So it doesn't depend. I mean, it doesn't matter actually, you know, if if it's an established tool that got hacked, or there'll be new tools that keep let coming me, up. Let me put it this way. Earlier time, what we used to do is uh, we used to change the RDP number, or we used to basically change the RDP number from 3389 to something else, or basically because serialized port compromisation used to happen. Now what is happening is there is an attacker who's coming in, who's doing carbo roasting, who's doing golden ticket attack, trying to compromise domain controller and spreading into the network just because of this human operator. It's, it's not new, Smith. No. It's not. Good to see you though. Yeah. <laughs> After but so the, long. I think it has got access to a lot amount of people. No, no, but it's not new. I mean, uh, human operated ransomware, uh, in fact, Cobalt Strike coming out, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, there was... Uh, 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 variation to that, which is available now to Cobalt Strike, right. which I believe an Indian has uh, actually Correct. written that code, right? that only. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Written so, that. they will always I find mean, different ones. I mean, I don't necessarily see it as that different. So, his point is CISO sees multiple threads, multiple tools, he only has to what combat. Is the first line of defense, EDR, XDS. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so, so, I'll just give an example. Uh, so, let's say, uh, Crypto or blockchain? You're right? the question not on the phone reading it. Uh, no, is it? no. Okay. <laughs> phone, yeah. So, uh, blockchain, so prepared. Yeah, blockchain, right? Uh, so, few years back, people said, okay, I don't believe in crypto. I don't believe in blockchain. You don't believe? Uh, people used to say, there are people, they say, okay, I don't believe in Bitcoin. But you see, uh, now in the crypto winter, a lot of people who are, they're losing job. But uh, even if they believe or not believe, their life is getting impact. So, in the same way, uh, I believe it will grow a lot. So, my question is, how hands-on CISOs should be in this disorder technology because these are new technologies and they are creating impact on people's life very fast. That's a planted question. Kumar, you want to answer? Yeah. So again, I think maybe I'm not able to hear it well. His question is, and the whole topic discussion, how technical should CISOs be? You know, he said two years back, they said crypto won't affect us, blockchain won't affect us, but now it's here. How technical should CISOs be and how should they become technical okay. besides hiring the best talent? Get it. How should they themselves improvise it? To, be, to get ahead of the curve thanks. and advise and secure the companies. Sure, thanks for translating. So, uh, That's a question, what right? I would say is that, you know, a person cannot be technical uh, in all the technologies, especially when the technologies are changing, when the world is transforming at the speed of, you know, the BAU. So, it's always good to have as much technical knowledge that you have, but at some point in time, you know, for you to be a CISO, it doesn't only need to be, you know, the hands-on and the very much technical part of it, unless you are into a, you know, service provider business where it is all the more relevant. But the idea is to understand how the security threat landscape is changing. What are the new disruption and transformations are, you know, happening. So what happens when a technology changes, the transformation happens, it is just that the battleground is changing, right? The fundamentals of security would remain same. You know, you have to ensure the CI is still, you still have to ensure the right authentication authorization. So just that its manifestation changes when the new technologies come in, right? Blockchain, it has got its own set of, you know, unique, uh, I would say vulnerabilities, but the existing ones, they do very well still apply to those. So the idea is to have the right set of people to have a right sense of where the industry is moving. And, you know, right. sticking it to the goal, prioritizing your, you know, areas of your focus. And that's how it should be a strategy. So CISO is, I would not say a pure play, a technical role. Uh, you have people to do the technical jobs and we should let them to do, you know, those kind of things. You should be more, you know, strategic and holistic and looking at, you know, to the uh, IT and, you know, uh, corporate governance. Thanks. So, I don't know if many of you know Rahul, but India's most prominent leader in IT, security, leadership, everything. Now today's topic discussion is, and you will write about it, I'm sure, uh, disruptive technologies and CISO's careers. You know, if they probably don't catch up, it could affect the career or somebody could take that. You have taken a long time to come to that seat on the table. What's your perspective if you write about it? How does a CISO get so adept at new technology which changes so fast? Blockchain, AI, crypto, uh, we had digital twin for earth, biohacking, autonomous vehicles, AI, VI, 5G, unmanned vehicles. How should a CISO be able to adapt to all this technically? Okay, so uh, I mean, my answer to that is that uh, let's not treat CISO as a god. Let, uh, as god. Yeah. So I let, thought they were gods. <laughs> let CISOs be humans. And uh, you know, as a human, you have uh, your limitations, you have your, I mean, urge to learn as well. However, uh, the kind of uh, environment that I am 
seeing and witnessing these days, there's a lot of stress being put and a lot of onus being put on a CISO that, you know, CISO will solve every damn problem which exists in an organization as far as cyber security is concerned. So, uh, you know, on one, on, on one hand, we, we say that CISO has to have the business acumen, business knowledge, communication skills. On the other hand, we, we uh, say that he has, or he or she has to have the technical uh, skills and knowledge on technologies. So, I mean, there has to be a blend of both for sure, but uh, there, there, there are limitations that, that one has to uh, live with. And to me, the approach for a CISO should be that they should know the application of technology to solve the problem. Not this is what Jackson is mentioning. Not the not not the actual technicalities of of those technologies. Thanks, Rahul. Lovely inputs. I've got Nandan who runs one of the biggest SIEM uh, product tools out here. Nandan, your perspective because you are selling stuff to CISOs, right? Uh, how equipped are CISOs should talk that language? You have an AI ML solution. Yes. Give me your views. Well, I think it is uh, just imperative for your existence. Uh, and it's imperative for their existence. I I believe so because. You can't just, uh, you know, block yourself out and live in a shell and say this is not happening at all. It is, it is definitely happening. And, uh, you know, being, being able to put that into perspective because you are, you are charged with a specific job to make sure that you are securing your organization. It's like, you know, uh, <clears throat> when leaders fail, then it's a major catastrophe. So you are at that helm. You are the one who's in charge of making sure that you are cognitive abilities are also at the forefront to make sure that you're always keeping, you know, uh, abreast with the technology and making sure that your organization, making sure the organization is always on uh, top. So, you know, so you are saying it's imperative. There's no choice. I believe so. Yeah. Otherwise I mean, you won't sell to them. Yeah. I, I don't want to even say this is an hype or whatever. <laughs> He's not answered that. <laughs> yeah. One more mic here, please. Thank you. Uh, okay. You can uh, stand up and talk. Just a small interjection here. I can get to here also. Yeah. So the interjection is that, uh, you know, uh, being a CISO, you may have, you may have now got an understanding that how many CISOs come from a technology and technical background. I mean, if there are more CISOs coming from non-technical background, that means something. I mean, that is that good bad? No, it's it's a good thing. I mean, then then you have a blend of both. That you have an understanding of applying technology on business issues, but you don't really need to have deep understanding of technology. That's but the audience point. is saying, get them technical. He's saying he won't sell to them. I think you're the lady and the, the gentleman. Yeah. So and while, while they answer uh, so. your perspective, Ankur, uh, so. he won't sell to you if you're not taking enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I don't really think uh, CISOs have to be hands-on. Hands-on is a very uh, wide word where you actually think about, you know, I'm, I'm starting to code or I'm finding security issues or something of that sort. No, I don't think we have we probably will have time to be hands on, but I think there are a lot of disruptions happening. We still have to be very, very aware of what disruptions can do to our company. And then it makes sense for me, for my company to adapt it and I should adapt it with, with it. Right. So that's very important. I not, I don't need to be hands on as per, but then I have to be technically sound to understand such technologies. I should be able to talk to a, a junior candidate in my team and understand what he's trying to say. So. Yeah, please go ahead. He's saying he doesn't have to be hands-on. Do you agree? Uh, yes, I agree. For okay. example, if there's a CIO, okay, do we say that CIO should be coding? CIO should be knowing the coding. Do we say that? No, right? Because there are hundreds of technology. CIO can't code, right? So why are we limiting the CISO role as the technology only, right? I think cybersecurity is beyond technology. We talk about cybersecurity to be an integral part of the business, which has to start from product design to the process design and then the technology design. Technology design is only a means of getting the controls, right? But it has to start from the basic. And there is there are two different roles. One is the cybersecurity and second is the technology risk. If you know only the technology, then you are a technology risk person and not a CISO. So I think it has to be, and I, I go with the panel saying that you should be able to correlate the dot. You should be able to, uh, you know, connect the dots, make a scenario and also see what is the business impact, right? So in the coding, like earlier, what we used to talk 15, 20 years back, like it should be a techno functional when you have to grow, even from cybersecurity perspective, it should be a techno functional. So that's, that's my stake as a CISO. 
Thank you. I think the gentleman ahead of you wants to speak. Yep. Ahead of you and uh -huh. Ben. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, Can I you get I... more mics, please? Is that yeah, I'll I'll echo the same sentiments that the lady just said that uh, the foundational uh, foundation is CISO of a career any... path for you. Is CISO yes. a career path for you? <laughs> so uh, the he point must is be that... sitting with his boss. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Who's the CISO? <laughs> good one. <laughs> you have to speak good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Otherwise, he'll employ you. <laughs> So the foundation of any uh, security program lies uh, with the inherent understanding of risk and that is what we want a CISO to contribute on. So whether we have a you know disruptive technology like digital twin for earth or uh, you know uh, crypto or uh, you know uh, or quantum or any other thing coming like that. So as long as the CISO is able to contribute how does this impact the business function then I think he's doing his job. We don't want a CISO probably I mean if he can code in Python and uh, do so any fair point. We all agree the balance is good. The most important point on this session is how we all agree CISO and Jackson over to you. How should the CISO being ignorant is not good. That clearly the, 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 the audience's voices don't be ignorant. Uh, you have to be there. You can't completely be on that because as she said changes happen fast. But how step by step would a CISO get at least be able to talk one hour or be challenge a vendor or be able to have a meaningful discussion with someone. How does one see so adapt to that? See, I'll, um, I'll just uh, slightly uh, uh, separate the two things. See, one, when I say that, should I be worried about this uh, to the gentleman's question? The thing is that if it doesn't impact my business today. Now, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example of uh, what we we're talking about. Uh, uh, either aerial unmanned vehicles, drones, for example, or uh, unmanned ground vehicles. Now, the research and the activities around this has been going on for a decade, in fact, more, right? I mean, everybody's seen the progress that's happening. Now, should I go and understand intimately how an unmanned vehicle works and everything right now in my job position? Maybe not. But tomorrow, if my airport decides, hey, listen, we have a controlled environment on the air side, no, there are very specific sp speed limits. There are lanes through which the vehicles today, which are manned, which people, and you guys have all gone to, uh, everybody has gone to an airport. You've seen on the air side how the, uh, how the land vehicles move, right? Along a particular line, particular speed, they cannot exceed, they cannot overtake. Very defined set of rules. Amazing, uh, what do you say, a sandbox to try out an unmanned ground vehicle over there. When it comes to that, then yes, as a CISO, I have to be intimately involved and understand how this works. A decade ago, uh, why, why would I be? Was there an application over here? For the same, very same reason, I don't understand to the gentleman's question how everything in cryptocurrency works. I don't. And, and uh, to your question, uh, I just want to answer, I will fail. Not I have failed, I will fail. And that's process of life. So as a CISO also, I will fail. So my point is that at that point of time, yes, how it applies, what is the use case for my role that I have to apply to it? And that is why I will look into it. Thanks for the answer. Kumar? Yeah, so I think uh, pretty much, I think even the response would be, it is actually a balanced role. You have to have multifaceted. It's not only a hands-on technical. That's just one part of it. Uh, there are a lot of other things that come with a, you know, a leadership role, whether it's in security, IT or any other field. I think with the CISO role, uh, the sense of prioritization, the risk-based approach, financial management, people management. I think that's what is a comprehensive, you know, a leadership role it is, whether it is, like I said, in security or IT or finance or HR. So, but the point is your eye should be on the target where the, you know, vision of the organization is, where the threat landscape is moving. Are you having a right sense of not only today, but how the future is going to be like DevOps, DevSecOps is a classical example. You know, as a CISO, you have to make sure when the development is happening at the speed of like, you know, business, then how do you ensure that the security is happening there? Now, it's not a very technical hands-on onto everything, but if you know how it works, how the business is functioning, you will be very well able to integrate the security into the fabric of the organization. So that's what I... Thanks. Yeah, so uh, I would also uh, echo 
the what Jack seen it. Kumar, Kumar have told. So it's a more of a generalist uh, kind of a role. Okay. So threat is uh, one side of it. There's a, a part of compliance which comes. Okay. There's a part of risk management which comes. Okay. So saying that uh, you need to still understand the technology like Jack seen was saying at least the areas which uh, you are using in your organization or you are likely to use in the future. You definitely need to understand the technology and how it can be applied or how it is applied okay so uh, that way i think to that extent yes you should uh, i'll ask rahul a question back uh, jackson mentioned clearly the steps that when it comes to him you know he'll get tuned to it but you as a editor of a magazine and running and if you had a story how do you believe CISO should be adapt at new gen technologies what should be a learning path for them besides reading your magazine i'm just saying on a writer note but uh, <laughs> if they had to chart a learning curve, would they go and hire five guys? So many mentor cycles have changed, right? Earlier we thought we were mentoring young generations. Today many of these are mentoring us on new tech. Because if you are not having a mentor who is a, a young kid, we aren't learning. So with the mentee mentor cycle being turned and the mentor being a young kid and we being the mentees for new tech, how do you see this? Well, I am sure, I mean, a lot of it comes from uh, in today's age, a lot of it comes from the peer sharing, peer learning, and it also comes from the partnerships that uh, ASISO forges uh, with multiple stakeholders, not from not only from within the organization, I mean from uh, the technology uh, vendors, technology providers, consulting organizations, I mean person like you uh, can be a great mentor uh, to, a, to a CISO on an on a incident response communication plan for that matter. You know, and, and when it comes to the technology, uh, I mean, you, you, you spoke about, uh, you know, the knowledge on how, how, the, how should they grow their knowledge on technology. So I think that's also a gradual process. As, as Jackson said, that if it is mandatory for him to know that how an unmanned vehicle, uh, travels on that path in the airport, then it is very essential for him to know in, in going in depth of that. Otherwise, a superficial knowledge uh, would be would be fine to me. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I like the word superficial. Ajit, over to you. You try and sell, and I know hard one. I know you're not prepared for this. You come in the front row. It's too tempting. All right. Uh, you try and sell uh, the next generation innovation to CISOs. What is your perspective of them? Where do you think? How should they understand your technologies? How ready should they be in next gen tech? Yeah. So uh, CISOs have been uh, very receptive. They appreciate. And they try to analyze with whatever use cases they have, the challenges they have. If it maps to their requirements, then yeah, then, then they take it ahead. But they are very empathetic with uh, new innovations and very keen to learn about it. Okay, thanks. Question to the audience. Yeah, yeah. Question. Mike here, please. I have one question. Okay, after him. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, latching on to what uh, Jackson said uh, on, uh, we'll have to take it uh, when it comes to us or when we are faced with the threat. Uh, how do you see the current uh, uh, the Indian privacy law that's going to come into existence probably and also the kind of uh, tightening of the government uh, agencies with the kind of awareness that they have on the public forums or the public platform. So how do you see, is that going to be really disrupting the life of a CISO or is, is that something that you need to be prepared for or? I think they pull back the law. Correct. So, <laughs> it's something that's going to be around the corner, let's say. Forget it for the next, I mean, when did they start talking about the law? I think it was so 19, I think. No, no, He's saying whenever it comes. I think I'll rephrase whenever this Whenever it comes. Do you think yeah. it should, we should so be something? more tougher, stringent. I think it came so life. close to the finish line that all the CISOs got uh, pretty worried about it. And I, I'm, I, I can, I don't know, I, I'm not speaking for, on behalf of my colleagues and peers. But I remember and being in discussions telling all my vendors, do you have data center here or outside? Bring everything here. <laughs> because I don't know what the government is going to do tomorrow. So you bring everything here. So yes, that was a concern. And I think to a great extent, see, uh, uh, naturally, uh, India as a nation has uh, economically boomed so much that every major presence is already here now. So I think from a data perspective, uh, uh, with regards to localization, it's taken care. Now comes about due diligence that we have to exercise. I think, uh, why wait for a law? Do it today. Privacy is a key aspect for every person sitting not only here, but in India. I think it's something we have to do essentially today. 
take permissions, take consent, process only as much as you need. And if your services are that good, your customers will want to share more with you. Having said that, we already know that everybody's data is out there and it's leaking. Uh, least multiple times. Yeah. yeah. Let me just add to that. See, uh, what we have also started doing is like we uh, say uh, design uh, security by design and all that. So these days we are talking about privacy by design, right? So right at the design stage, you take care of all the aspects of uh, data privacy. So it will come naturally. So another question with respect to the law in place, like certain India has got a new law of six reporting initiatives in six hours and ma maintaining a 180 days of backup. What is CISO's views on that? How has it been taken in the industry outside? So I'll tell you because we, we speak to a lot of CISOs. I think CISOs are taking that very seriously. A, uh, I think the first part was even NTP clocks. Now why do the NTP clocks think requests come in? Because if you are certain and you are seeing an attack on a sector and there is a three minute time difference between five companies, your logs and forensics go for a toss. So the logic behind that is to safeguard the country, to make it more secure. So, uh, our CISOs preparing for it? Yes, I have my, myself at about 43 sessions with different CISOs with one P company having 87 investments in India. So yeah, CISOs are talking about it. Many of them have begun the compliance journey. Some are finished, some are in different phases. But more or less by and large, uh, we had 87 CISOs on a mind map exercise where they came and contributed. So they are talking, they are in different phases of compliance. Some have accepted it open-handedly saying, wow, use this law to get more funding. Which is a great smart move, right? Tell the CEO, CFOs that this is law, you have to get mandated, give me more money, get me a SOC provider. For SOC providers, again, great because you have a mandate. You can't report if you don't have logs. So the industry of cybersecurity has also got a boom with that. There are positives. They're hiring more. The more tools of cyber are being spoiled. Most innovations happening in cyber. More startups are happening in cyber. So the law subsequent cyber goodwill which it is creating for the entire cyber market in India. More startups, more people, more jobs, more more CISO prominence. So those are positive things. Absolutely. So is this a neck on the line. But One more question in line that yeah. only, sir. Where do you see India after maybe five years in cyber security as CISOs of reputed companies? Look so, around you. It's very promising. Absolutely. CISO's point of view if, of the revenue companies. That's this is your... the future of CISO's. Absolutely. This is the future. I take it that way. <laughs> well said. And I don't think we'll be behind in any other country in any form. With, with talent like this, the only part is how much of this talent remains in India, how much it goes abroad. Right? If this best talent, and I'm sure people are wooing for this talent, why won't India? This is the future of cyber in India. Yes, sir. The green t-shirt. Two minutes, yes, I know. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, SOC uh, operations, source services uh, these days. So I, was, I just wanted to... Uh, Why these days? I thought these guys spoke for last for 10 years. Off late, now. off late. <laughs> so uh, I just want to have a take on, your take on, uh, do you prefer cloud or remote SOC services like MDR and those things or the on-site team handling the operations, SOC operations in your control? What is your take on that? Remote or on-premise SOC operations? See, uh, technology or tool doesn't matter. What matters is people who can identify the threats for you. Okay. You can have an on-prem tool or you can have a cloud-based. Okay. But finally, what matters is people who can identify threats or who can do threat hunting for you and help you out in identifying threats proactively. I'll answer your that question with a saying. The old English saying which says, cut your coat cloth according to the size. It doesn't really matter. You know, if you've got more money to spend, do it in-house. But it doesn't mean offsite is bad. Many companies are doing offsite and doing equally good. But if you've got more money, if you've got more funding, if you have more regulation, you're working for big bucks, have it in-house. Perfectly all right. Yeah, One last question. Sorry. To be Go honest, ahead. just to add there, if it's the same cost, same functionality, I think I would rather, my personal opinion, I would rather prefer cloud because it takes away a lot of, you know, kind of underlying infrastructure management from you. Uh, there could be certain challenges from a regulatory or legal compliances perspective, you know, where the data is flowing, how it is being tracked. There could be certain clients who could influence you. But if everything is taken care of, I, I think cloud is something, you know, my preference. Okay, last one minute. Uh, you have a question and then I'll ask my own question. Yep. Go ahead, Rin. Hello. Yeah. So my question is essentially kind of echoing to a lot of factors that we spoke about. 
one of them being reduced time to market right so when we talk about reduced time to market we start developing decentralized trust like cloud socs or like uh my cyber security workloads being managed in the cloud or i start talking about uh trusting a uh, trusting something like pure id right to manage my credentials but when i'm doing all of that one thing that i'm developing is security being somebody else's responsibility and me monitoring them right which is which is where posture becomes a very critical aspect like that. that i'm looking at say something like uh, something like obsidian doing a lot of work for me or something like a posture management giving me a certification to prove whether security is good for me or not but so with that being said question? so with that being said how does that uh, come into the perspective of cisos adopting decentralized trust for a security uh, service in general i'll answer your first question and give to the audience i think whoever does it for you responsibility fair and square lies on ciso shoulders there is no way you could say somebody else's problem jackson can add more to that it's it's my problem i in i can outsource to kingdom come i could be the only person left in the entire security department but if anything happens it's my problem so there is no accountability finally rests but having so, said that i just want to add see shifting it outside doesn't mean see i, I understand when a ciso's vocala, uh, vocabulary this might sound very mundane and boring but governance plays a huge role over here if you do, and when i say governance it adds the aspect of what burgess has been speaking about you can't govern a partner on cyber security if you don't understand cyber security if your go to market is i don't know maybe two weeks because you're that great at it uh, it should include security if your if your security is not inbuilt into that go to market strategy for two weeks then i'm sorry you, you are a bad product developer because you have in factored that in you don't uh, sell a car without the tires right why would you sell a uh, software no matter how great it is without it being secure same reason okay. so last set of two questions jackson rightly mentioned the future of india as in talent out here if you as a future talent had a mentee mentor relationship what would be your ask of cisos and then as closing comments the cisos give it back to you what will be their ask of you when they would go and future build their teams with you and as as audience members so audience if you had to have a mentor mentee relationship with the best cisos what would be your aspiration or ask of these cisos adakshaj anybody what would be your ask of cisos what would you expect them to to be in life to be able to have yeah go ahead CISOs next career path. Career path. Okay. So you want to dislodge him, so you want to take his place. I mean, you know, that's how you know, right? What they are aspiring, so they become inspired. Okay, I'll he'll answer that. Anybody else? What is your advice or request of CISOs? Audience? Yeah. Yeah. Three, four hands up. Actually, actually, that's something similar to the question there. So, uh, how does a uh, CISO uh, supposed to react when they are uh, threatened by a uh, emerging threat or the disruptive uh, threat so how do they make sure that their career, career is not threatened okay so next and take yeah your and then closing comments from each of you <laughs> always <laughs> living on a thin line so uh, i would like to say since you uh, told about the mentor mentee relation how we can build so uh, because i am very new to uh, security so often like sometime i uh, reach out to people for advice so i understand that being a ciso you are very busy so i believe uh, ever uh, if you want to build a good relation with the younger generation these days like we have linkedin and uh, twitter maybe you should uh, take out some time from your busy schedule and maybe you can uh, answer some questions like uh, recently i uh, asked few question to uh, one of the ciso of a big company uh, indian company I asked him like how I should grow. If even even today in the breakfast we talk, right? When I ask you like how how I should grow my career, then you 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 told so me. So advice is listen and talk more yes. to young generation. True, true, true. So you can get inputs. Yeah. That's a very yeah. valid point. Yeah, Thank because you. often uh, it's very difficult for us to connect with you. It can be very difficult. So if that you line can be breached, no, no. Uh, why? Why are we so difficult to connect? Oh. Uh, is it a perception or is it reality? Is it perception it's, it's or reality? It's, a, uh, it's uh, some kind of perception also, and also uh, it's a reality. But I can understand that you are very busy. 
but maybe uh, CISOs or people in the higher uh, position, they should take out some time and talk with the younger generation and ask their issues. So very valid point. Even uh, if you don't do it, do it. If you're doing it, get continue it. True. Thank you. So starting from you, your closing comments, future generation technology is the best guys to hire. What's your advice to them? I think talk, talk to us more. We are reachable. Nobody, I think, in our in our community will feel like you can't reach out to us. You reach out to us, but then I think my motive finally, as somebody asks, you know, what is our career progression from now? I would love to create more CSO in the industry and uh, I think make change to, to the world. I think there are many disruptions happening in this industry. There are more companies coming in in India. We would need more CSOs which are which can handle such such scale. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so I think my advice would be, uh, I think like I think the Snell con it's all very hardcore technical you know kind of sessions workshops happening and, I, and it's really you know kind of very exciting to see these kind of discussions and workshops happening at a large scale so I think I'm very uh, I would say happy to see that the future generation which is coming up is very well on you know on the cyber security landscape from a defensive and offensive both perspective keep learning that and you know, more and more hands on that you get in, you know, kind of this phase of your life is going to lay a very great and, you know, a solid foundation. Although the transformation is happening, you know, very fast. And as you become a uh, CISO, maybe, you know, whatever time down the line, the technologies and all will keep on changing, but more and more technology fundamentals and, you know, the foundational layers that you keep making strong will always help you. That will always remain with you. So that would be my advice to you guys. Thanks, Kumar. The more technical, the more employable, the more they can take your role, as you mentioned. That's okay. <laughs> that happens. Thanks. Jackson. Um, my just parting comment is, let's see, I've met a few, um, quite a few people over here. They've explained to me amazing products and amazing work that they're doing. At the end of the day, sell value, not products. When you are talking not just to a CISO, to a CIO, to a CEO, sell value, not products. They, if they don't see value in what you are giving them, it doesn't matter how great your product is. So remember that when you talk and engage great with advice. senior leaders. Well done. Thanks. Yeah. So I was also discussing with some of you during the day. Okay. So you guys are doing an amazing job and uh, the level of uh, technical hands on what you have is also great. Okay. So I completely agree with Jaxi what he has told. Okay. When you are talking with a CISO or any of the leaders, you no, know, it's value which always matters okay so as long as you are able to sell that value or give that value proposition okay that's all it matters thanks sandeep thanks uh, jackson thanks kumar thanks ankur with this we come to a close great panel discussion thank you lovely audience thank you hidden questioners thank you so much